fight for Baltimore City State Attorney, and who's set to lead the charge of helping fight uh, this out of control violence in the city? Yeah, it's a big job for whoever gets in here. Candidates in that race working to unseat the incumbent, Marilyn Mosby. Now, Mosby. I certainly faced some intense criticism during the rise in violence throughout Baltimore. Here's a look at the results so far. Taking a look, same place that he has been most of the evening. Ivan Bates in the lead with 43% of the vote. These are 19% of the precincts reporting right now. Marilyn Mosby with 29 through Vignaraja trailing with 27. And again, Bates campaign focusing on those nonviolent uh, offenses that he really wants to focus on, putting people for behind bars for illegal possession of a handgun. Uh, WJZ's live team coverage continues tonight at 11 o'clock. Let's go to Paul Gessler. He is with Mosby's campaign. Paul. Yeah, Marilyn Mosby in the house at her watch party here in Waverly. We have not seen her yet. We have not heard from her yet. She has reason to hold off on speaking to her supporters. There is still a very close race here. Marilyn Mosby trailing as all these numbers have come in. In the last primary, we've been talking about it on CBS Baltimore. She did so well in early voting the first time she was reelected. This time around, Ivan Bates took the lead right off the bat with all those early voting numbers. And the next batch of election day returns that have come in has shown Ivan Bates has actually lengthened his lead over Marilyn Mosby. We've been following her campaign throughout the day today. She's made several stops in and around the city trying to rally her supporters. Of course, there is a big batch of mail-in votes here in Baltimore City specifically, about 22,000 mail-in votes that have to be opened later this week. They can't be opened until Thursday, and that's not even counting those mail-in votes that came in today. So these numbers we're seeing right now, there is a big batch of mail-in votes, and that's what the Mosby campaign is hoping goes in her favor. But if the numbers are going the way they are, Miss Mosby would need to get pretty close to half of those mail-in ballots to shift her way to overcome a now more than 4,000 vote deficit to challenger Ivan Bates, a prominent defense attorney, um, Theru Vignaraja, also in the race, former state and um, uh, city prosecutor in his own right. But for now, we're awaiting Marilyn Mosby to address supporters here at her watch, watch party in Waverly. Back to you. All right, Paul, thank you. As we mentioned, Mosby's got some competition tonight for sure. Let's get out to Annie Rose Ramos live with one of those challengers. Annie Rose, tell us. Vic and Rick, there's a little bit of a subdued, deflated feeling here at the Vignaraja camp, but ultimately they say they are proud of the campaign that they fought and that they upheld in the past couple of weeks and months. And of course, as we've been saying all night long, this isn't over yet. Now, Vignaraja is not new to this race. He has run for this position before back in 2018. But what he says is different now is that people know his name. He is running on a platform, a promise to be able Able to lower that homicide rate here in Baltimore City. Part of the way he wants to do that is by hiring more homicide detectives. But we pressed him and asked him how he plans on doing that, knowing that many of those homicide detectives are retiring in this city. Here's what he had to say. And it's easy to make these sloganeering promises on the campaign trail. But look, one of the things I'm so proud of is every time we make one of these promises, there's concrete details for how we do it. We're going to turn to the Maryland State Police. Homicide detectives that work for Maryland State Police have worked with me. FBI agents can help on certain kind of homicide investigations. And some of those people that are retiring, some of these people that are retired, we got to get them back. Now, Vignaraja does have the endorsement of Republican Governor Larry Hogan, crossing political party lines in order to give him the Democratic candidate, Theru Vignaraja, his support. Now, Theru also saying that he has been zipping around this city the entire day, visiting multiple poll locations, and that support that he was feeling from the voters, he does say he will be reflected in the poll results and those election results that we expect to see later on this week. But I'm going to Toss it over to Stetson Miller, who is with Ivan Bates' campaign. Stetson, what do you got for us there? 
Hey there, Annie Rose. Yeah, they just wrapped up the election night watch party here with the Bates campaign about an hour ago. I spoke with him just before he left, and he said he is feeling very good right now and cautiously optimistic about the results. He's currently got about 41% of the votes counted so far. He is a former prosecutor and defense attorney who's campaigned on holding violent repeat offenders accountable through effective prosecution, prioritizing alternatives to incarceration, prosecuting illegal handgun possession, and resuming prosecution for offenses like drug possession, prostitution, and trespassing. Earlier, he said to us if he does indeed win, he will do the best he can to, give, to keep everyone here in this city safe. If I am blessed to win, then I recognize I've made a lot of promises to the citizens that I have to work as hard as I've worked on my campaign, I have to work twice as hard. And um, I'll do everything I can to make sure I do the best that I can to keep everybody safe in our city. And a quick reminder, there are no Republicans running in the primary for his city state's attorney. So whoever wins this race will go on to be the city's next top prosecutor. We're live in Charles Village tonight. Stetson Miller for WJZ.